Hello traders and investors, I'm L.A. Little and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets, I'm doing it from a neoclassical perspective. That means each day we ask ourselves, what happened today? What might it tell us about the coming ones? Do a show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday, broadcast at before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube and under the channel L.A. Little. If you want to subscribe and you haven't, just reach up in the right-hand corner, do so. Anytime I push public content, you'll get a notification. As far as what did happen today, let's take a look at the numbers first, and then we'll move over to the um, actual quotes, and it uh, looks pretty green to me. So a green day pretty much across the board. The only one that really stood out today um, on the downside, uh, at least initially, um, was the silver market. The silver did end red here at the end of the day. Uh, but, uh, you know, for the most part, it's just another day of uh, hang and a little bit more up, right? Just grinds its way higher. If you look at the, you know, U.S. markets, they just grind a little bit higher. The bonds were up a decent amount. You got that employment number tomorrow. The big news last night, of course, was uh, from the Bank of England. Actually, that was from this morning. And what do they do? Well, they say they're going to cut rates by 25 basis points. They're going to expand their QE program by 60 billion pounds. And they started up this new 10 billion pound corporate bond purchase plan. So looks a lot like what we've seen everywhere else. I think uh, the 10 billion extra was a little bit more than people thought. And the 60 billion was a little bit more than the 50 that most people were quoting. So if anything, they uh, uh, did the uh, shock and awe a little bit. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I really don't know how much longer central bankers can continue to, uh, you know, prime the pump, so to speak. Everybody's down to almost zero. And uh, I guess you can go on QE forever, but uh, QE itself doesn't seem to be, um, you know, producing the growth that everybody's looking for. So um, regardless of what we think, uh, what we see is that these markets continue to respond positively. You can see it here over in the uh, European markets, you know, where they did get that little boost, half a percent back to the upside. I don't have the FTSE up here, but the FTSE was up uh, almost a percent and a half, I believe, today. So definitely helps to whoever does it, right? The value of that currency, which the pound did drop today, the value of that currency drive those markets higher. That's been the story pretty much everywhere we look for about as long as we have been looking. Let's take a look at the charts. Uh, I'll start here with the S&P 500. So, you know, what do we have? Well, we have that little range up there. Uh, if you remember yesterday we were talking about we had an inside uh, day. Uh, that little range was from about right here to there. We had an inside day yesterday. This is not an inside day compared to yesterday today, but it's still inside this little bar, right? And this probably becomes the most significant bar because now at this point, you know, if, if you go back three weeks here, this is the only bar that has any kind of price spread to it. And so, uh, you know, there's no volume pickup here anywhere and nothing like what you say over here, right? But uh, the, the wideness of the bar is a little bit wider than everything else up there. So it's probably the most important bar. So, you know, I think the top of that bar becomes important right? Is it that significant? No, it's not. You can see all the support zones way down here. It's not drawing any up there yet, the charts. And that makes sense, right? Because there's nothing significant up there. But on a short-term time frame, right, if we're looking at, you know, five, 10 days, then that bar is going to stand out. So, you know, on a very shorter term time frame, that's something to watch. If we look over, and we haven't done this in a while, we usually do this on Sundays, uh, if we look over at the weeklies, right, you kind of got this little roll taking place. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't put too much weight on it. I don't think it means all that much at this point. If we go over to the NASDAQ now, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ, the NDX, uh, they kind of have their own little thing going or at least attempting to. You had a little pickup on volume. You push back up. You're still the inside bars. All that looks the same as what we just saw over there. But on the NASDAQ, you're actually trying to go into the swing point high. And that top is 51.76. We've gone over it, and we're sitting right at it, 51.66. Tomorrow's employment numbers. If this market gets some juice tomorrow and it breaks this swing point high, and especially if it goes over here and breaks the other one, then you're going to have the NASDAQ doing the same thing that the S&P has already done, and that is it's breaking out to new highs. If we go to the NDX and we look at it, NDX is already up there. The question is, is can it hold it? 
47.39.75 is the number. It's sitting over it right now. Question is, is will it hold it? This is the big question for tomorrow. Do they sell this back down and you fell at the top or do you get over it and you confirm the breakout on the S&P 500? If we look at the uh, uh, Russell, now the Russell of course had the bigger white price spread bar. Today, the Russell tries to get to the top. 1219.05 gets to 1219.09. Uh, actually got a little higher than I thought it did. Actually has a little bit less volume, but again, these volumes are so close, I can't really put any weighting on them. So that really is a test failure at the breakdown bar, right? If you want to call it that. And again, I'm I'm using five, ten days versus you know a daily chart because you can only go back that far. You know, range has been so tight lately. Uh, something like this sticks out on a shorter, a much shorter term time frame. So that would be a quote unquote test failure on price, volume, question mark, because it's so tight. So again, I wouldn't get up in arms about this, uh, but it is worth noting that, uh, you know, they go up, they try to get over it. And what you're, what you're doing in neoclassical is you're saying, okay, what's significant? Where's, where is a test going to take place? Oh, here's one. It's going to take place on the Russell, right? On this bar. Well, it gets up above it, can't hold it. Okay. Buyers do not, are not willing to pay those prices and to continue to buy once it hits that level. Okay, that, what does that tell you? Demand is not as strong as you thought. Or not so much as strong as you thought, but it's just not strong enough to make it go higher. And what happens? They sell it back down by the end of the day. Don't want to hold it overnight. Get jobs number tomorrow. We'll wait and see what that looks like. That's kind of the way this uh, looks. Let's go over to the uh, European markets. I'm going to go to the DAX first. Uh, so the DAX uh, gets back inside its bar. So you have the same thing here we were just talking about over there. You got this bar, and then, of course, you got the swing point high uh, that it had gotten over, and then the other one over here that it was trying to get over, right? And so it's going to go back up there, and it's going to try to test them again. And so not, there's nothing negative about that chart. Uh, it's just a little doji on the way up. doesn't give you a lot of confidence. The CAX is the one that looks worse. Right, because that one can't really get off its uh, duff. And if I go over to Switzerland and see what that one looks like, uh, let's see what Swiss looks like. Uh, looks more like the DAX. So, you know, what can I say about Europe? Yeah, it looks like they can try to bounce a little bit more. And then, you know, they're not going to have any kind of test until they get into these two bars. And and if we're looking here, you know, and, and I've been using this, uh, mostly this being the um, uh, Swiss index, right, because the Swiss index has been giving off better signals. Uh, that is the little area that they're going to test into. You get over it, you can go back and do the top again. So if you're looking, and what, that's what we do in neoclassical, if you're looking for an area of significance that you can see a test into that will give you more information, that's what we have at this particular moment in the European markets. Let's uh, move over, see what uh, Asia looks like. I think they're all going to look about the same, and that is, is they're not going to be that interesting. So the Nikkei gets under, back over, and does as much volume on this test. Yeah, so again, doesn't it, it, the ranges are so tight here, it doesn't really tell me anything. Let me look at Shanghai, see what it looks like, and just a little climb back up. And uh, let's see what Hong Kong looks like. And a little bounce down. I mean, I, I don't see anything in any of these charts. Okay, so, so here's kind of a, a rule of thumb, right? If you've got a bunch of charts and they're not really telling you much, which is kind of what we have here, you know, then, you know, in terms of indexes, right? Then the next thing you can do is you can look at other factors, and you see me do this all the time. And that is if we can go over the ox markets and see if we might see something there that would give us a clue. Like tomorrow with the employment number, you know, if it's a, if it's a, a, a strong number, the dollar should lift. So we can go look at the dollar and see if the dollar tells us anything. Okay, so the dollar's got a little bounce going. It tested this low, got under it, didn't stay under it, bouncing back up. Where's the test on the way back? Well, it's these bars, these three bars. So if I'm looking at you know, where's a price point tomorrow that I can see something that tells me, okay, something's really going on. It's going to be right in that area, right? If it can get over that area or if it fails in that area, then that's going to tell us something. But it doesn't tell us anything tonight. 
we don't have anything here to tell us something tonight. Let's go over to the euro, which is the largest weighting in the dollar index. See what that one's saying. Now, if, um, if it's coming down and doing anything there, but it's not testing anything, just bounces up, bounces down, right? All of these you can interpret either way, right? I could, I could say, oh, well, this is going to be potentially an ABCD structure up. Yeah, that's possible, right? But then I could walk over probably, and I haven't done this, but let's just do it together. I could probably walk over to this chart, which is the weekly chart, and I could probably do the exact same thing on the way down, and I can, right? I can take this A point, measure it down actually to there, and there's the bounce, and potentially we've got this going on. And you can do that, folks, on almost every chart. And so what does that mean? That means we don't have any kind of significant decision points out here to give us clues. And if that's the case, what do you do? Well, what you do is you go with whatever the trend is. And so you back up your charts. You look at them on the weekly basis, intermediate term time frame. You ask yourself, what is the trend? This one's kind of sideways. If I look on, uh, you know, the, the indexes, of course, those are up. And then I say, okay, that's what I have to go with. And so if you're going to do something, you keep your bias to the upside. Folks, uh, join me here at TA Today. You can become a member uh, like many others already have if you want. Uh, we do a great job of uh, keeping you informed and also giving you information that helps you to make money while you learn how to trade. Hit the Get Start button. Try it out. I'll be back on Sunday. Have yourself a great night. Let's see what they give us tomorrow. Right now, you know, the bias has to be to the upside still. Still it is. Have a great one. Good night.